Hello and welcome, Dave and Joan Maroney here, your Mother of Mercy Messengers, with the monthly message for February 2024. And first off, we have some live events that we're going to be doing. Back on the road again. I'm yeah. back in the saddle again. Yeah, we're excited to be back in the saddle again. We will be uh, come down to South Texas. There's a lot of reasons to come to Texas now. Pray for Texas. Pray for the whole country. We will be taking part in the 12th Annual Divine Mercy Conference put on by Fountain of Mercy Ministries. And the theme is forgiveness and transformation. Right. And it will be on year. Saturday, February 10th. Um, we're going to have also in this description box, we did a video with Father Jason Lewis, one of our Marian fathers on fire, Marian fathers who will be there with who us, who will be there. And we will yes. be discussing more uh, about what you can expect from this uh, Marion family tag team between Father Jason and Dave and I. And Father Jason is awesome. He is on, like Joan said, on fire and dynamic and, and, uh, Right. Incredible. So uh, happy, happy to be joining up with Father Jason Lewis on February 10th at this wonderful conference in Westlaco, Texas. From wherever you are, come on down and come see us. Then on February 15th, which is the feast of Blessed Father Michael Sopochko, yes. we're actually going to be getting de diving into Lent because Lent starts when it starts on St. Valentine's Day. It should be easy to remember. I love Ash Wednesday, that. February 14th. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so since we're on that subject right now. Boy, yes. a lot going on on that day. Think ahead because a lot of people on Valentine's Day, they're going out for nice dinners, wine, roses, all that kind of stuff like you usually do for me, Dave. Yes. <laughs> but it's remember Ash Wednesday is a fast day, an abstinence day. So plan ahead and do your Valentine celebration <laughs> Monday, the, 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 uh, or Tuesday, or Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Yeah. celebrate early so that you can, um, appropriately, um, observe, observe yes. the days of yes. fasting. That is one of the precepts. That's yes, the beginning of the, the 54 day rosary novena for mercy that, that starts on Ash Wednesday and concludes on Divine Mercy Sunday. You can sign up for that at mercysundaymomentum.org. All right, so we're getting off track. Yeah, I know. Let's get back on track. So we'll get back on track. But February 15th. February 15th. <laughs> well, we'll be at Theology on Tap. What a great way to enter into Lent. For the, uh, in Castroville, Texas, which is going to be at the Shatton Bowl Event Center. This is the... Feast of Blessed Father Michael Sapochko. So if you live anywhere um, near the San Antonio area and want to come on out for an informal meeting with us and some great folks from Castroville, please do join yeah. us. That'll be at 7 o'clock p.m. And then on February 23rd, we will be in Ellicott City, Maryland, live and in person. Or Ellicott, I think they say it. Ellicott. Well, at Our Lady Center, which is a wonderful, wonderful place, we 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 go there every time we go to to DC uh, to visit our our son and his family. Uh, we always head out to Our Lady Center there in Ellicott City, uh, and so we'll be uh, presenting on uh, Friday, February twenty third. They have a noon mass, yes. and then um, after that, I think they have some confessions and some prayers. Uh, we'll be starting about one o'clock. So. Uh, any other developments on anything else that comes up between now and next month, we'll send out a, a blast to let you know so that you can join us wherever you are. Okay, now. Well, and of course, you can join us the 1st through the 9th uh, in February for our live online Holy Hour that we hold. Uh, we are now, this is our fourth year of meeting with people from across the, the continent, from almost every state. Uh, in our country and and then and beyond and last month in january we had a wonderful series uh which we called the mama mary series where we talked about just incredible marian intervention yeah. in the history of the world to help build our trust and our faith in the power of god the power of the intercession of our lady and some of the mighty things she has done to stop armies to change hearts to cure people and There's so so much you know so much that that we don't know about marian apparitions i learned so much and it's like gosh we got to get this information out there in these times 
And if you can't join us live to pray with us live, uh, which we, we do have the talk uh, for about 15 minutes before the holy hour, then we do the holy hour. We zoom to Vilnius. We're going to be praying the rosary together. We pray the, the uh, litany of the saints. We pray the chaplet of mercy. It's a whole holy hour of prayer praying the prayers with a beautiful online family that right. joins us but Boy. these specific prayers because these are the the novenas right that the lord told saint faustina to make for her country and this can be applied to any country and we do we have people that join us from ireland from south africa from kenya uganda canada malta sometimes they come on so we know this is going worldwide. Join in. And if you can't be there live with us, no worries. We record it and you can watch it at your convenience. It usually on YouTube a yeah. couple, and rumble and rumble takes us an hour or two after we finish to upload it, but it, it will be there. You can go to the YouTube or rumble divine mercy for America. You want to go through the speaker lineup? So the speaker lineup on the first, I'll do the first one. Go ahead. Father Cash Falick, boy, he's uh, he's been instrumental in our ministry. He was the provincial superior there in Stockbridge for many years, and he will be uh, presenting on Our Lady of Czestochowa in Poland. Father Kaz is a native Pole. He's lived here in the United States for many years. I love the story of he knows our intimately the our, our Lady and how the the Polish people are drawn to her and the the pilgrimages. They do to the shrine there in Chestahova. She's been instrumental in the history of the world. I'm sure Father will be sharing some of those most significant events, like having to do with the Battle of Vienna. And the founder of the Marian Fathers was there praying with them and traveling with them. Anyway, more on that Boy. Uh, today, this afternoon on the 1st. Then on the 2nd, Dennis then and Angelina Gerard, our friends from Canada, are going to be here uh, speaking about Our Lady of the Cape and what an incredible story that is, the beginnings of the faith here in North America. And uh, so all of us, you know, uh, all of us need to, need to to learn to know about this this apparition, Our Lady of the Cape. And Our Lady of the Cape will actually be traveling on pilgrimage from Canada. Is it Ottawa? She's in Ottawa? Yes, well, close to. Yes, uh, down to Indianapolis for the uh, Eucharistic Congress that will be held in July. So we're welcoming Our Lady, who will be uh, tying us together with our Canadian brothers and sisters. Then on the 3rd, Dave will be flying solo. I'm actually going to be on retreat for the weekend. Yay, a woman's retreat. And he's going to be sharing about... Our Lady of Zaytun. This is in Egypt at an Orthodox church for several years. Our Lady would appear as, as a brilliant light over the church hundreds of thousands of people saw her and of all faith all faiths of all ages every single person so let that sink in y'all in times of who knows what heaven is going to do so we're rehashing these stories or bringing them to the front to say if she did it then why couldn't she do it now maybe there's going to be a big huge demonstration of people in our lady like we learned last month which happened in the philippines in the 80s so Amen. our Lady of Zaytun, beautiful. And then on the 4th, I'll be back uh, that night, but uh, we found a, a nice little video by Father Mark Goring. So we don't want to make you think that he's going to be with us live. Perhaps one of these days he will. What an incredible guy, incredible priest, Father, um, who's going to be speaking about Our Lady of Hushu, Hushu, I can't say it, but of Ukraine. So pardon me. In Ukraine in 1914, she appeared before Fatima and said there will be a war. And she said, Russia will become a godless nation. Now in 1914, Russia was, uh, Catholic was, was, was Catholic. Uh, so, so the uh, Bolshevik revolution. Then she appeared mm -hmm. uh, again in 1980. In the 80s? 80, 84. 488, something like that. Anyway, she well, appeared. We'll have the details yes. down by the fourth. Amazing, amazing. And you know that the the horrors that have happened in Ukraine the last few years with the war. And uh our lady said she loves this country very, very much. And no wonder it's under attack for the faithfulness there. There's a lot of evil there. Um, but our, our lady will win because this is what she has shown us throughout history. And then on the fifth, 
what a blessing. One of our own from that joins us regularly on the Holy Hours uh, and has for quite some time, Petra Kaiser, who's originally from Germany, I think the Bavaria area. Um, she had told us about Our Lady of Haraldsbach, Germany. And as she dove into it, as we dove into it, oh my gosh, this was, um, I think in the late 1940s, 1949 and 1951 or something like that. But this is like Fatima on steroids. It is incredible. This place is the exact midpoint between Fatima and Moscow. People saw the miracle of the sun, many, many healings. I just cannot believe this is not more well known. And again, Our Lady appeared to four, I think it was four young girls. This is a constant theme also, consistent theme of Our Lady appearing to children. She did that at, at Ukraine, uh, was a 12-year-old girl, these girls in Haraldsbach, Germany. And then the next day on the 6th, we know how Our Lady of Medjugorje appeared to young people. And Father Jason. Father really Jason is going to be with us live to talk about that. He has a, a wonderful, special love for Medjugorje. And uh, I guarantee you that will be a spirit-filled presentation. His so conversion to the faith to was because of Our Lady of Medjugorje mm -hmm. and he actually his whole family. And now he has a wonderful healing ministry. And so come and uh, listen to what Father has to say uh, about what Our Lady has done for him and for the world through the time she has spent decades here speaking to her children. On the 7th, we're back again, the Moronis, and we're going to be talking about Our Lady of Gerditzwald, in Poland, and uh, you know, just another uh, incredible apparition. The Polish people were being suppressed at that time, and so uh, terribly suppressed to the point where the children were not allowed to speak Polish in their schools for for years, and the the religious were run out of the country. But how Our Lady came, and what did she tell them to do? That don't tell them. But you have to come and find out what, when she said, what do you want us to do? Well, she said that, no, I can't say. <laughs> it has to do with beads. Don't say. Beads. <laughs> now you gave it away. <laughs> All right. That's a consistent theme with Our Lady, too. She's always reminding us, let's pick up those beads. Then on the 8th, this is a kind of psalm. Oh, of yes. Our Lady of Akita appeared. Yeah. To uh, the statue would would uh, would bleed and and would would cry. Uh, the bishop there uh, analyzed the tears. He said he even tasted the tears and they were salty. There were human tears coming from the statue. And Our Lady spoke to Sister Agnes Sasagawa, and it's a very ominous, uh, apocalyptic, if you will message we all need to hear this message so our hearts can be quickened to pray more and to to come to our lady and to to love her more and to uh to ask mercy from heaven and to the eucharist as well it's, it's very really eucharistic. it's a strong strong message she prophesied the the conflict that we have now in the church on and on but on the ninth, then we're going to conclude with, I think this is the perfect way to end this series with Our Lady of Good Success that took place uh, near Quito in Ecuador, Ecuador, in Ecuador. And what a blessing. Father Donald Kloster will be with us, our friend. Father Donald has been Amazing uh, with us uh, throughout before, the, the yeah. years uh, before. He actually lived there. Well, he, he was a pastor of a parish. Right. Not in... Uh, that's the capital city. Well, right. he, he was there in Ecuador as a pastor. And he would go on pilgrimage to the church where the, the uh, Our Lady, the statue uh, was there in Our Lady. And uh, on the on the feast day and all. Oh, second tomorrow. Sorry to interrupt you, honey. But no. yes, at the timing of it, uh, the feast, the presentation um, is the feast day there of Our Lady of Good Success. So he has you know, personal on-site uh, experience to uh, to relate to us. You know, and I called him when I was reminded that he did live down there as we were trying to put this uh, schedule together. 
um, I said, Father, I, I know, hey, you lived in Ecuador. I said, do you know anything about Our Lady of Good Success? He goes, to say I know something about her would be an understatement, <laughs> something along those lines. So he's very familiar. And you know what? I love, this is Our Lady of Good Success. And that's how we're going to end this because Our Lady is going to be successful. Amen. The church is going to survive. She is going to crush the, the head of Satan in all evil. And we are on the verge of that happening. But as we know, before the light, the darkness is really dark, but we turn with trust Amen. to the divine mercy. We turn with trust Jesus to our Christ. lady. We turn to Jesus in the Eucharist and the sacraments, and we turn and start preparing well for the feast of mercy. So you guys, everybody, now is the time. Reach out to your parishes. We want all of you to encourage everyone to take part in Mercy Sunday Momentum. Dot org. Dot org. Go to Mercy Sunday Momentum dot org. Um, there are places on there. If your parish is celebrating an extraordinary celebration, they can put it on the map. There are, is a download uh, feature on how your parish can prepare well for the Feast of Mercy, some ideas. Just download that. It's got bulletin announcements that they can put in for the entire Lenten period. A wealth of resources. We're going to put that link in here. It's in, in the, the email as well. But get that out now so that once we start with Ash Wednesday, we really want to start promoting. And already we're getting lots of orders in for our Divine Mercy Sunday flyers that we have both in English and Spanish. And we are encouraged to get these out as soon as possible. Ash Wednesday is the perfect day to do it because as we all see, the churches are packed with people that come to get their ashes. And this is the opportunity to let them know about the great graces that are available at Easter and the first Sunday after Easter, but there's some preparation. People need to go to confession. We need to be praying. We need to be fasting. We need to be almsgiving. We need to be opening our hearts, getting all cleaned up for this feast of mercy. And if we don't get these out until Palm Sunday or on the feast of mercy, it's almost too late. I mean, it's great. Get them out whenever you can, but we're, we're happy. These are great, you know, bulletin stuffers. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful flyer and uh, are to hand out after mass. This is a wonderful way to heighten the awareness of Divine Mercy in general and, of course, Divine Mercy Sunday in your parish. You can order these at uh, uh, divinemercyforamerica.org. In our store, we'll have the link below in the description. I know it's some people and some priests have even passed them out at be going into mass. Here's an idea. And then what they've done is say, you've got your oh. little flyer, the feast is coming. And then they kind of go over the information on the back, how St. Faustina says that uh, what the Lord's promise, complete remission of sin and all punishment. Hello. Sign me up. Any sin, any sin Amen. completely gone. As Lord long Jesus. as we are repentant, and we are being merciful to others. We have the official statement from the Holy See's International Theological Commission that it's likened to a second baptism. That information, that quote is here. How to receive the graces and reminding everybody that all the divine floodgates through which grace flow are open on this day. So yes, remission of sin and punishment, but remember all the divine floodgates. We need an end to human trafficking. We need an end to drug abuse, alcohol abuse, pornography, brokenness in the family. We need healing. And end and end to the peace. To the evil in our country. Satanism, all those that are lost in darkness that hate God, their hearts can and will be touched. And it can be through our prayers and our sacrifices. So y'all get ready to have the most incredible solemn lent in your life amen for amen. your soul for your family for the broken marriages for the sick babies for the children Those that are in despair, captivity struggling for the elderly that are being euthanized for the lies that are coming through our media for the fear mongering those who are alone so much loneliness here in this time so again join us for the novena Hear these stories about Our Lady and, and how she directs us during these times and respond. Pray with us. 
uh, as often as you can, either live or like we said during video. Join um, also Father Mark Barron will be leading the uh, chaplet every day live. We just did a video with him. On Instagram, out. The Divine Mercy on Instagram. Yes, he is our new, the new director of the Marian Helper Center. And we'll put the link to that video also. Right. So you'll have the opportunity to pray us with us. Pray the 54-day Rosary Novena that begins on Ash Wednesday. Encourage your friends, your family, your prayer groups to do it because we're all joined together. Okay, Joni, we need to wrap it up. Last but not least, make sure you're part of the confraternity of the Most Holy Rosary. So when you pray that rosary, the power of it is amplified. And uh, we'll have the link to that Rosary Confraternity. Yes, we will. All right. So with that, we hope to see you at Zoom. And uh, email us. Love you all. Order your flyers today. God bless you. We love God you all. God bless you. Dave and Joan signing off for now. Amen.